welcome to Thomas Messi on Vlog, episode 14. And in fact, I'm going to be talking about movement 14 of the Livre de Saint-Sacrement. Uh, I'm in yet another place, by the way. I'm in St. Peter's Church in Burnley, beautiful building, uh, not so far from where I live. Uh, I have a key and there's underfloor heating and a kettle, and it's a lovely place to come and practice. Um, not the acoustic or the space that Blackburn's got, but um, a greater sense of space than my practice room, put it that way. Anyway, this piece, uh, movement 14, is the prayer before communion. The prayer after communion, movement 16, I've alluded to uh, in episode one, I think it was, of these vlogs. And uh, last time I spoke a little bit about, well, I showed you some bits of movement 15 that comes between the two, which is effectively the act of communion. Uh, Le joie de la grâce was my favorite piece in the whole cycle, and I shall talk about that. Uh, I think in the next vlog I shall talk about that. But anyway, back to movement 14, prayer before communion. And the, the quotation that Messiaen's put at the top of the page uh, is uh, from the Bible, Matthew 8, verse Eight, uh, Lord, I'm not worthy. It's it's the centurion um, uh, commenting. Now, this idea of Lord, I'm not worthy is is what uh, gave rise to this piece for Messiaen. He said that this piece is an act of humility. So that's where we're coming from here. Structurally, very very simple. We have lines of plain song played on um, one of two registrations. It sort of changes between manuals. Lines of plain song uh, interspersed with what. Uh, uh, string chords basically uh, in terms of the registration but to me it sounds like a, a sort of interjections from a from a distant choir or something like that, that that's kind of how i think about it um in my mind very 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 slow tempo to those chords by the way this is one of those moments where messiaen employs one of his crazy slow tempi um and i I, it was natural to subdivide when you're playing these chords in your head to sort of count in semiquavers or demi semiquavers or even hemi demi semiquavers, depending on um, how it's scored. And uh, I rather like Dame Gillian Weir's suggestion. I think in, a, in an RCO journal from uh, 2008, but possibly in the Faber Messiaen Companion, I can't remember, but in one of those two places, she says that when playing these slow tempi uh, and subdividing in the head, it's quite, quite good to use triplets. Uh, to try subdividing into triplets because you get that natural sort of sense of motion and it keeps the music sort of alive in your head de -da 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 -da. and it makes it more natural to in, uh, employ little um, little nuances, little bits of rubato. Anyway, there we go. I just thought I'd share that with you. I've tried it out. Uh, actually, I, I don't subdivide into triplets, not because I think it's the wrong idea, but I just, I just don't. Um, why don't I play you the first page? Oh, incidentally, before I do, there are two plain song melodies used in this piece, actually, but this one, um, is a dedication, Alleluia. Um, and if you're interested, it uh, also appears in uh, the Verset, this piece that Messiaen wrote, I think in 1961. I should have looked that up before recording this. Um, but it's a, a standalone piece that nobody ever plays, uh, also based on the dedication, Alleluia. So uh, when I first played this piece, I was like, oh, that's a familiar tune. Um, and it's because it's from that other piece of Messiaen. Oh, it's absolutely heavenly, beautiful piece, and comes straight after uh, the two walls of water, which I talked in talked about in a previous um, a previous episode, which is a, this absolute you know torrent of a piece. It's terrifying, huge, massive final chord on full organ, and, and then you have this. It's just um, uh, it's wonderful. Now. Um, in technical terms, these slow chords, uh, what I invite you to do is to listen to this particular series of chords from a couple of pages later. Um, with your eyes shut, in fact, listen to these chords.
How does it make you feel? I would hope that it's serene, it's peaceful, it's all the rest of it. Just for fun, um, I am going to move the camera, which is not very professional. Um, uh, but now I want you, <laughs> now I want you to um, watch my hands. I hope this works. Watch my hands while I play the first, uh, the, the same series of chords. What I um, what I hope uh, that you noticed was how busy the fingers are. So you got that kind of serenity, uh, but as soon as you see what the, the, what one's ha what the hands are doing, the player's hands are doing, it, it sort of conveys a slightly different impression. So there you go. There's a, there's a justification for organists hiding behind curtains. Um, the art is to hide the art. Someone once said. Um, Anyway, so the, the, you know, although it's a slow piece, although it's basically quite easy, the, there's, there's still stuff to think about with these chords. Uh, Messiaen, of course, being a control freak, uh, sorry, a details man, um, there's uh, fingering suggested, which, frankly, uh, given that I'm also a control freak as well, uh, is quite handy, because I would have blatantly peppered the page with uh, pencil markings uh, had, had Messiaen not provided them helpfully for me. Uh, something else to say about this piece. Now, if you go back to the opera, St. Francis, the, the piece immediately prior to this, um, that dominated the 1970s for Messiaen. If you go and look at the other massive um, orchestral uh, slash choral pieces uh, that preceded that, Transfiguration, so on and so forth, um, look at the orchestration, or listen uh, even better, uh, and there are some moments in those pieces uh, where there's, uh, the, 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 uh, there are extreme bass effects, real sort of uh, really dark sounds, and, and the, you know, the, the orchestra's full of contrabassoons and all sorts of stuff like that. So go and look at that. Go and have a listen. I mean, it's only about seven hours worth of music I've recommended you go and listen to. Go and do that and listen out for those bass effects. And then look at the pieces and listen to the pieces that Messiaen wrote in the last 10 years of his life. So after Leave to Saint-Sacrement, basically. Listen to the pieces there. And you'll notice, particularly in his orchestral writing, um, the bass has not disappeared. Of course it's not disappeared. But um, the, the, the writing, the orchestration, is, uh, is much... Uh, higher, but how, how could I put it? Um, it sort of floats. These deep bass sounds have gone, um, and no longer do they underpin uh, the heavenly string writing over the top, for example. That just floats there instead without these heavy bass notes underneath. Um, I've probably not done a very good job of uh, explaining that, but what I'm trying to say is that's sort of a new thing in Messiaen's writing. Right at the end of his life, that is a new thing. Or, or something, a, a particular way of scoring, um, that, or a particular texture that, that comes to the fore more in his later works than it did previously. My favourite example, in fact, um, are the five, uh, or are they six, little esquisse, little sketches for piano that he wrote in 1985, I think. Absolutely beautiful pieces, frankly my favourite pieces of Messiaen, little bird sketches. Each one is only two minutes long, they're wonderful. But they're very, very high up. None of the sort of dark piano effects you hear um, for, for example, in some of the, the earlier bird pieces uh, from the 50s. Um, but th it's very delicate, very light in texture, this music. Um, and indeed, I've read somewhere, I think Peter Hill's saying, that actually it's helpful if the pianist just sort of sits slightly further towards the treble end of the keyboard because that they could become more comfortable to play. This piece is the same. I found with this and with movement two and with movement 15, Le Joie de la Grasse, um, I actually find it more comfortable to move slightly to my right on the organ bench uh, in order to be able to, uh, to play comfortably these chords which are high up because this piece and movement two and movement five point in the direction, as far as I'm concerned, of these later Messiaen pieces where the, the, the deep bass has gone. At the same time, in movement nine of this, this cycle, Les Ténèbres, you have these extraordinary cluster chords on 16 and 8 foot stops. So you've kind of got both. You've got the extraordinary bass effects, things that people hadn't heard from organs before in some cases, one, one Messiaen scholar said to me. Um, 
you know, fr from their point of view. Anyway, uh, they'd never heard an organ make such a noise. You've got that in Leighton Ebra, the really dark sounds, the sorts of things you find um, in Le Stigmat, one of the, one of the acts of um, uh, the opera, for example. And so you have that darkness there, and then you, uh, you come to a movement like this, and there are no pedal stops out. All the pedals are doing are uh, augmenting the, the chords that the hands are playing. Just a, there's just a manual to pedal coupler, and the, the texture is altogether lighter and more um, sort of airy, basically, heavenly, um, I would say, um, which is not to say other music by Messiaen with bass lines um, that are deeper is not also heavenly, but uh, that's the way it makes me feel. That's my reaction to it. This, um, I have to say, rather like the previous vlog, is uh, one that I've just done because I felt like it, so um, sorry if I'm rambling. But anyway, there we go. There are my thoughts. That's Movement 14. It is beautiful. Um, it's a joy to play. Uh, but also, I think it's one of three movements in this cycle which look forwards to the last pieces that Messiaen wrote. Um, and that's just something interesting I wish to share. So there you go. Next time, I'm going to talk about movement 15, the next movement. Uh, talk a little bit about Messiaen and birds, just a little. Uh, I'll record that at Blackburn Cathedral um, in a few days' time. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>